I split 75 ARC players into three different teams and left them all alone to see who will survive the battle to the death. The first team is the Highlanders, they have tall ground and very overpowered teams. The second team is the Mainlanders, they have covered ground and are resource rich. The third team is the Flatlanders, they have flat ground, good teams and fair resources. There is also a desert death zone that is free for any team to visit. Each biome has their own benefits, dinosaurs and dangers. There will also be event challenges as the game progresses and each team will need to establish their empire to survive and thrive through the battle against enemy teams to find out who is victorious. This is 75 Arc players simulate Asian civilization in Arc Survival Evolved. Let's get into it. First up is the Highlanders. The Highlanders were a pretty organised group and to start with they first met up at the lighthouse and organised their team. Second up is the Mainlanders. The Mainlanders already had some foundations up due to their high resources, however an RG came into camp attacking all of their players and killing a lot of them. The last is the Flatlanders. The Flatlanders about 10 minutes in already tamed a Rex, a Triceratops and a bunch of PTs. They were a very powerful military force not to be reckoned with. Back over at the Highlands this is what was going on in their cave. Okay. Uh, my friends in Highland Cave, I'm going to set up a storage box over here and I will craft some hide armor for all of us so that way we have a little bit more protection from the elements. Yeah. Thank so you, my friend. I hear Allosaurus or some kind. Allosaurus is in the cave? Oh, no, I'm no, sorry. No, sorry. No, 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 no. Over at the Maylanders base, they decided to go inside the Waterfall Cave at Viking Bay. This is due to the RG attacking their camp and killing a bunch of their players. They also decided to send out their own taming team, and this team was trying to tame a Rex. Wait, is it, is it a 180? Yes. Is it right? Guys, stop, guys, stop, guys, stop. Don't kill it, don't kill it, don't kill it. Stop, 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 stop. Guys, stop, stop. Stop shooting, stop shooting. Yo! Stop! I think it really helped. Uh, okay, guys, we should move here. our base. Are we going to do it on the raft or? Well, I'm telling you, we should go to that metal island. You it's should. It's okay. We can live in the in the cave while we're harvesting the metal in the cave. All right, let's go there. And there you go. The Flatlanders decided to move over to this large metal island, and this was a great island for defense. Plus, they were extremely hidden inside the cave of it. This was a very good choice by the Flatlanders, and this would lead them to a very good position in the game. Over at Mainlanders, the Rex escaped and started attacking them. He's following, he's following. They don't, 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 Inside the Mainlanders base, however, it was going a little bit better. Their main builder has already set up a decently good stone base, and it had some stairs and some gates, so it was going pretty well. They also were the first team to have irrigation and crops planted. Back over at Highlands, they already had the most organized team and even started talking about electing a leader, which was very smart. Sir, sir. Who would le we like to be the leader of? Or who would like to be the leader? Fal Hasek. Yes, Fal Hasek. Do you want me to be the leader? Yes. Okay. I graciously shall accept this on behalf of all of you. However, inside the Flatlands new base, they already started to plot against enemy teams. Oh. How are we going to push uh, the players? I don't know. It, I don't, at this moment, we just need to, I guess, work on getting as many teams and a base up, and then later think when we have scouted their base, how we are going to rate them. And we need maybe flame arrows to get the plant species. The Flatlanders were playing it smart as their base location was so hidden, they could pretty much go anywhere on the map and look for enemy bases. I then informed each team they would need to go into the election stage. They would need to elect a leader to lead their team and if they did not do so within 15 minutes, their team location would be revealed to other enemy teams. So they all rushed to get to an electing point and elect a leader. The Highlanders were already early for this as they have already elected a leader. This leader was called Valhazark and this was his speech he wanted to give. My brothers! My sisters in Ark, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Those other people in those tribes outside of our own want to take our lives, 
Do you know what they want to take most of all? My virginity. Ow. They want Ow. to take our equuses. No! Our equuses shall be our main fighting force. Therefore, we shall make sure we get all the strength we require, and we shall beat them, and we shall defend our honor and our land. For Highlands! Woo! <laughs> Thank you very much. I I hope we are all... The Highlanders' mood was now lifted and they were ready to win. Over at the Mainlanders base, there were some not so inspiring speeches by the two candidates that were trying to be leader. Uh, I'm, I'm Jameds, I'm, I'm Jack. I built this base. Um, we have been through many trials and tribulations as of far. We've lost many a people and many a team, and I am hoping to change that. We don't have the best defences as of yet, and I may not be very inspiring, but this is the best that we're going to hope for so far. I don't know what to say from here, just... We need a proper leader, and I can hopefully fulfil that role. After a not so inspiring speech, the second person was ready to step up, and their speech was a tiny bit better. Well, so far I've been somewhat of a leader. Not like I've been terrible with the good stuff, and I've been helping around the place a lot. So I think I'm pretty fit to be a leader, and I won't let anybody fuck with us. So we're gonna win this no matter what. After these two speeches, they then decided to elect the first person, as he built the entire base all by himself. However, none of them were at all inspired to fight or generally do anything. Over at the Flatlanders base, one of their players has set up a speech podium with benches around and it was very nice. However, they came very close to timing, and as there were so many speeches, they could have got their base location revealed. First up speaking is a man called Stoner. Okay, yeah, I guess I wanna be a leader, just because uh, I can speak English and Dutch, and we both have English and Dutch people in our tribe. I uh, worked hard on the wreck, so I trapped it, and then I... Uh, most of the knocking I did, um, I'm the highest level, so that says something, I guess. Um, I've been working on the base down here. Uh, yeah, I guess that's why. Next up was a more aggressive speech. So, uh, I'm MKA. I'm not the most experienced player, but uh, if you elect me, I promise we will raid everyone we come across. We'll kill everyone. There is no room for peace and we will take over this land. That's pretty much my policies. Cringe as hell. Wow, cringe as hell. Wow. <laughs> Next up was a very inspiring speech. All right, so obviously it's me. You know, I got the base down. I got the base location. Good. Also, I'm driving people up at the start. Um, I'm the one who knocks. You know, I want the smoke with the enemies. Um. Yeah, I got I got the racks here. I got the metal pumping. Me and your mom though. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you should have liked me because I run fades with people and uh, go Republicans, go guns. You guys can keep your Second Amendment. That's all I gotta say. But what you think? you were pumping metal, but I put all the metal in the fortress down there. Oh. No one else did. Yeah. Shut up. Shut up. Oh. Shut up. Did I ask? Personally, I did not ask. Yeah, but you did say, and you were lying, and I don't oh. want to lead them. Yeah, but who got the metal spot? Uh, start. I, I was got... on metal runs. Who found the Giga? I found the Giga. Yeah, I didn't tame all it. Though. The, all the metal still I put up there. in the fortress down there, I got myself. Dang, cry about it. No, I'm not crying. I'm I just. Rest my, I rest my statement. The beef, man. Oh. After all of that beef, they then decided to group up and they would go next to who they thought would be leader. Everyone grouped up next to Stoner, however, Stoner could speak both Dutch and English, so it gave their team a small advantage. However, he was not the most enthusiastic leader, but he was still a great fit as he was also the highest level. 
Over at the Highlands, they had already started maturing a bunch of wyverns as well as hatching the eggs. They had also tamed an Allosaurus, had crafting stations up, had gates up, and they were by far the most powerful team as they had the most players and the most defensive buildings. They then gave me a small tour of their base. Wow. Who the fuck's get tamed at level 250 scorpion? <laughs> I saw someone doing that early on. What the fuck? <laughs> Where is it? It seems their leader, Val Hazark, the man with the red hat, was doing very well, and he was very organised at leading the team. Uh, this little oh, map is just telling us our area. Um, the rest is lands that we have not explored yet because fear of the other tribes not accepting us as their neutral benefactors. Currently the plan is, once we get Wyvern set up, uh, maybe going out and maybe making some uh, deals with the other tribes. And that was it, the Highlanders started thinking aggressively. They were by far the most powerful as they had Wyverns maturing and they had the most players on all of the three teams. The Flatlanders however continued their plotting. Some are still going to go out scouting and others are going to build a metal base somewhat looking nice with hopefully some planned decks if we can find them. And I might actually go and try to just fly into the base of Highlands and just place some C4. And that was it, their leader Stoner planned to C4 the Highlanders base. Over at the mainlands, there was some seriously sad news. Nearly half of their team completely incited them and then left the game straight afterwards. Well, we're sick and We don't it. want to die. We're leaving. We're, and they're not doing any work and it's only kind of us five who's doing stuff, so... We're going to leave and we're going to start the desert faction and hopefully we win. We also plan on hitting the uh, Wyvern trenches. I, I, I have okay. hope because five of us and a group of five is easier to manage than 20. I mean, there's four of us now because Thingy isn't Thingy oh, isn't back yet. I uh, see. Do we have enough flyers to get away? No. And so the mainland's team, that didn't even have enough flyers to get to the desert, decided to start the desert faction, where they would try and hide. Back over at the Highlands base, a wild poison wyvern was mysteriously led over to the main door. This was mysterious, seeing as no poison wyvern ever travels this far away from the trench. The Highlanders then deployed three PT units to try and deal with the threat, however, the dragon was way too powerful. In the result of this, they had to rush straight back inside their base, and all three of them forgot to close the door to their base. Little did they know, there was a Flatlander waiting at their base. This Flatlander was Stoner. He was on his PT armed with C4, and he was able to fly straight into the base without any difficulty, as Val Hazark behind him, unaware, closed the door. Stoner now went on foot without being detected and started placing C4 on the base. This caused serious issues for the Highlanders. What's going on? What's going on? Pick the eggs up, pick the eggs up, pick the eggs up. Okay. I, I, I have the lightning, I have the lightning. I have the fire. Where is he? Shit. It's kind of hard to see where fucking Nathan, because I'm seeing... Trying. That was what me you did him. What do you mean? He starts shooting the pig. It was, it was our base. Yeah, we killed him. It's kind of hard to see where he is. Uh, someone literally flew in with a PT strapped with C4, charged it, detonated it. Is it and you? No, that's Nate. Uh, well, this is me. What are you thinking? Oh, he wants to scrap you, dude. He wants to scrap. The Highlanders then made the mistake of thinking the person they just killed was one of their own team members that incited them. However, Little did they know, the person that actually placed all that C4 was the Flatlands leader and he was still inside their base waiting to be found. I'm now talking to Stoner in a private chat and this is what he has to say. He's currently inside the Highlands base and they have no idea. I destroyed quite a bit. I'm still alive in their base. I'm just looking at what they are doing. <laughs> I'm still alive in their base. <laughs> This whole time I'm just watching what they are doing and they just keep on walking so close to me. So I'm just watching what they are doing but I can't really do anything inside that base. After c throwing their entire base and insulting them after, he then was just sitting inside there giving the Flatlands team all the inside info they needed to kill the Highlanders. Over at the new desert team, 
there was only 3 players left out of the 25 in the original mainlanders. This was not looking good at all, however they had slightly high hopes as they were not going to be found here which was very true. They generally just started farming resources and they also sent out a few players to go and visit the wyvern trenches to try and get some lightning wyverns. Their mission was eventually successful and they managed to get one extremely high level lightning wyvern which they would use in the future to battle. Over at the Highlands, Valhazark decided to give his own speech on how he would repair his fallen empire. Yeah. I am going to give a speech. Enjoy your speech. That way. Thank you. So, we have seen what happened. Please tell me that's RPT. Yes, it is. Very good. Yeah, it's me. It's me. It's me. Okay. Now, oh, they, we've they really seen what's that. just happened. These enemies do not give a shit about us. We have seen what these enemy tribes care about us for. He brought in a PT and blew up our shit. Oh, shit. Now my plan is, I'm not gonna take this sitting down. I don't think any of you guys want to take oh, this sitting down either. Shut up. So, the plan is, half of us are going to rebuild this base and make it stronger than it was last time. So let's work our asses off to win this competition and make sure we fucking win. Some of the hopes of the Highlanders was restored. Valhazard gave a great speech and they then realized they had the most players out of all of the other teams. So they were still powerful due to their players and due to their maturing wyverns. A little while later, I got back into the VC with Stoner, the Flatlands leader. I then went over to Highland Space to have a look how he was doing, and he was then encaged. And this is what he had to say. Kings, how's it going? Well, uh, not that great, but I'm slowly dying actually. So I might get out of this cage. I'm okay. on 32 HP and 31. It's going down, 30. So I might... Oh yeah, soon. I I got broken bones now, so I will just come and get revenge on these stinky little bastards. They're just some stupid ass people. They didn't even rebuild their fabricator or anything that I just blew up. I blew up three of their bases in this cave and all the, they couldn't even find me at first. It took them 20 minutes to find me in this cave while they had a parasol. Like, they're just stupid. The whole bunch of bobs together. Except the part that they have weapons. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> Valhazark then wanted to get on his Equus and ride over to the lighthouse where they first organized their team. He then wanted to give a private speech on what he would do with his empire in the future. This was it. I am Valhazak, ruler of the Highlands. As I look out on the lands, I see everything that I know is mine. But it is not just for me that I do all this. I wage war, I make peace, but most importantly, I don't do this for myself. I do this for the tribe, I do this for the family that we've made through this whole time. Through today, we've had some up and downs. We've had people kamikaze us, destroy our buildings, try to make our spirits crumble like dust. But you know what I say to that? Nay, we shall rebuild. We shall make our buildings stronger and we shall show them we do not know the meaning of surrender. We will make them be the ones that crumble to dust. I am Valhazak! However, this was not the time for a speech. Valhazak got a message from his team saying he was being raided. This was the Flatlanders. The Flatlanders, half of them were currently at the base, getting resources they need to go for a full blown raid on Highlanders. They were refining metal, getting all the resources they needed, and upgrading their highest level griffin. The Flatlanders were ready for a full blown war, and they had a plan set out. The first part of this plan was setting up a trap so the Highlanders would try and raid them and think they're weak. What? Not really fucking back. Why is he Flatland guy, Bob? One of any more lives. The Flatlanders pretended to tame a Karka in order to trap the Highlanders into thinking they're weak. 
This worked very well. The Highlanders moved over and the Flanders were sitting there ready. The rest of their players were getting on their teams ready to go and attack for a full out war. The Highlanders were being killed at their base, at spawn and at this Karka. It was not looking good at all. On the Flatlands team there was one experienced Griffin pilot. This man was very good at killing with a Griffin. He kept swooping down, killing Highland members and then running off. This was a serious threat to the Highlanders. Their numbers were going down quickly. Their players kept dying and dying. This was the worst timing for the Highlanders as their Wildlands were just nearly matured enough to go into battle. The issue they had was their players kept dying, kept respawning and they were not able to join back the team. The Highland Empire was not looking good at all in this moment. They needed their Wyverns to be matured. The Flatlanders timed this perfectly so they'd have no chance of fighting back. But it, it, it turned off my Wyverns, that's not even fair. My Wyverns have two thousand elves. Is that you? Here. Is that one of our people? Yeah, that's me. Are you running, bro? What are you doing? Why are you running that way? No, wait, what? That's not, that's not me. Who's that? I, I'm running I here. Behind. Look, I'm behind you now. That, who the hell was that guy then? Oh, that Griffin again, bro. Bro, I asked We're dead. They're Where are the they base. Going? In front of the base. In front of the base and all over Highlands. I'm in front of the base. I'm, I'm at the gate. Can someone come at me? Oh, the back. And that was it. The last Highlands player killed with a long neck rifle. That was the end of the Highland Empire. All of them were completely dead and there was no coming back for them. All that remained was the Flatlanders and the Desert Faction. The Flatlanders took a reasonable approach to this. Half of their team stayed inside the base ready to defend from the Desert Faction. The other half went out scouting in the desert to try and find them. However, the Desert Faction was playing incredibly smart and they decided on a very great stealthy attack in the night. As night hit, the Desert Faction moved in their Lightning Wyvern on a ledge and started firing rockets they have crafted towards the Flatlands wrecks. This caused serious distress. Rockets were fired and only half or less of the Flatlands players were inside the base. And there's rockets at base. <laughs> I think the mainlanders are here. Where? Where? They're at base. They're raiding it right now. Oh, shit. They, they are... Oh, watch out. Oh, they... lightning wyverns. They got lightning wyverns. Nah. Mainlands just made one big comeback, I guess. <laughs> the Flatlanders were actually very scared of this attack as they had no idea how many players were on the opposition team due to their stealthy night attack with a lightning wyvern. They were genuinely scared of this lightning wyvern as it was one of the highest level ones they've seen on the game and it was doing a lot of damage to their wrecks. However, their incredibly skilled griffin pilot was on the tail of the wyvern and due to the wyvern's turning circle, it was no match. The last desert faction remaining players then made the mistake of moving the wyvern to the main entrance. This meant the wrecks plus the griffin could both attack the wyvern. Therefore, very soon after, this happened to them. Yeah, we got we got to lightning. Oh wait, I mean, they're all back. One? Let's go, we won. <laughs> I'm on my way back, but <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and that was it. The final attack from the desert faction was unsuccessful. Like I had expected that the island's rate would be way harder, and then I just said, "Yeah, we are under attack." I thought, "Okay, well, this is going to take at least ten minutes." It was just one minute, and they were dead. Well done to the Flatlanders for winning the entire battle and fighting against the Highlands and the Maylands. If you guys do want to take part in these future ARC events, you can join the Discord in bio, which will be PS only for now. However, in future, the event on platform may change. This was also a test event to see how the YouTube video would come out, and it was pretty good. So, in future, the events are going to be much more organised and going to have way better recordings. Stay tuned to watch the future 100-player ARC Civilization events.